Anthony Mackie is here on the show. <laughs> there he is. Look at this guy. How are you, friend? How are you doing? How was your holiday weekend? It was great, man. I have to say, you have a very comfortable couch. I'm very nice. I'm very happy to be here. Well, now, you were born and raised in New Orleans, which is a place I still haven't visited. But you used to run your own music label with your, with your cousin. <laughs> what sort of artists were we, were we putting out? What sort of music was this? And what was the label called? So... We had a, uh, a label called Take Four Records, and it's because we didn't have enough money, so you only provided four takes. And uh, <laughs> we put out, it was most my cousin and them, and it, we put out a local, local rap. It's called Bounce Music. We have our own culture of music here. And um, like every artist, if you go online and Google Bounce Music, every artist that puts out a major hit, they'll remix it into a bounce song. So, like, Adele's song, Hello from the Other Side, yeah. I've never heard that song before, except for the bounce version. And I was like, this is the best song of all time. Then I heard the original version, and I was like, she should have stuck with the bounce version. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's a growing part of New Orleans that you... that you in, have you built in every respect with your own hands. I don't know if people know... Or, or lots of people know that you do this, that, that you, you you build houses. How many houses have you built now? Uh, well, it's it's been since 2006, 2007. So I do about three or four a year. So I'm close to 37, 38 houses. But you're genuinely in there putting the work in, doing it, right? Yeah. That's what makes it fun. I mean, that's the whole point. Is it? Like, I love buying a piece of dirt and then three months later you come and you have a completely new structure that you've built and created with your own hands. I feel like there's a show in this. <laughs> Avengers Assemble. <laughs> <laughs> it's just you, it's you and the Avengers building houses. I don't know why this isn't on Disney Plus already. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It would be a great a uh, show with me and Chris Pratt. The last thing on earth I want to see is Sebastian Stan or Paul Rudd with a nail gun. No, but that's... <laughs> but that's what makes it great. You and Chris Pratt are putting stuff up and then, like, Sebastian Stan's, like, trying to saw something. He's like, ow! <laughs> Somebody would definitely lose a limb. And I know for a fact that Lizzie would definitely shoot a nail gun at me, 100%, no faith, no bars. Wow. I mean, I'm genuinely... If you want to put this together, I'm, I think this shows... A, I think it's a go <laughs> from the off. I really do. <laughs> now, you're back in the Marvel Universe now. You're in the series uh, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, which is out on Disney Plus in March. Now, you're going to yep. know about this, that the, everybody online is saying that you're the new Captain America. And I think you are. That's it. <laughs> I think you are. I think it's you. No, the thing is, if you watch Endgame, at the end of the movie, Sam Wilson never accepts the shield. He actually tells Cap that the shield is for him and it doesn't feel right on his arm. Sure. If you look at, like, you know, Marvel is great at building characters over the course of many films. And from Winter Soldier, which was my first movie, to now, my whole goal in the Marvel Universe was to, like, help Cap, was to be Cap's friend. For sure. So at no point in time in Endgame did Sam Wilson accept the shield at all. Matter of fact, it made him happy to come back from time and stand once again at Cap's side. But I think that's where the series kicks off. This is based on nothing, I should say. I think it kicks off. This is only my own theory. It kicks off hey. with it kicks off with you being like, ah, oh, I can't do it. I can't do it. And by the end of episode one, bang, he's got the shield, and we're <laughs> off to the races. So I must I'm gonna ask you this question, and okay. I'm gonna be very sincere, okay? Yeah. I might get in trouble. Go on. I might, I'm definitely gonna get a call about this. Every Marvel movie, there's been photos leaked of a uh, character or an event by paparazzi before the show or movie came out, right? Yeah. So if we're shooting in Atlanta, Prague, wide open areas, and I'm Captain America, not one paparazzi was there to take a picture of me? 
Or, wait, wait, wait. <gasps> I've got it. It's the last, it's the last scene of the season. And that's why they haven't got it, because the last thing is you put the thing on, the suit on, and you're inside, interior, and you go, I'm ready, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> that's the line. Come and on. This is why you are not a writer for Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> Telling you right now. They'll play this clip back. They'll play this clip back. Now, you have to be, because you're, you know, Captain America, you have to be. <laughs> you have to be in great shape when you make Avengers movies. Is there a time, and I know that you really look after yourself, is there a time when you think, do you know what? I'm just gonna just gonna go nuts and let go now and just see what happens. Just take the wheels oh, off. Of and course, just... everybody, everybody have their cutoff date. So you know, my number is 55, and my goal ever since the beginning of my career, my goal was to be the old angry police chief in the station house that just comes out and yells and curses at everybody like the old dude and. Uh, uh, in a uh, Beverly Hills cop. Yes. yes. Like, that's my goal in my career. So if they make, like, I would love to make Law and Order New Orleans. I come out and I'm the police chief and I'm like, damn it, go solve the case. And then go back in my <laughs> office. You work one day a week, you make like a bucket of money and no one questions you. I love this. I absolutely love this as a career plan. And then when that show's on, which will be in, like, 20 years' time, we'll all go to our kids. No, he used to be Captain America. <laughs> Look at him now. Now, let's talk about your new movie, Outside the Wire. It's been number one on Netflix since it came out last week. For anyone who hasn't caught up with it, tell them what it's about and who you play. Well, basically, I play um, uh, Leo. He's a, uh, a cyborg a soldier who enlists this young drone pilot who's played by Damson Idris um, to go with him and try and stop these uh, band of bad guys from getting nukes and taking over the world. So basically it's training day meets Terminator, but with the two of us being as sexy as possible. <laughs> now you shot the film in Budapest and while you were there, Will Smith had a big movie premiere and he had a, a huge 50th birthday party and you, you got to go to this party, right? Yeah, I am officially now Will Smith's friend. I was invited to his 50th birthday party. You weren't, you weren't there. You weren't invited. I wasn't there. But I, <laughs> so we're in Budapest and my publicist calls me and she's like, yo, what are you doing this weekend? And it was all a buzz on the streets of Budapest that Will Smith was going to be there and it was going to be his party. So everybody was trying to figure out how to, how to go. So my publicist was like, do you want to present Will Smith with his 50th birthday cake? And I'm like, it's Will Smith. I will jump out of Will Smith's 50th birthday cake if I get to go to the party, right? So she's like, okay, cool. So we go and Will puts on a crazy concert. Jazzy Jeff is there. Oh, I'm like, stop. we have... The fresh, pr like, this is my mind blown, right? So all these people are there, and we're just looking around, having a good time. So the cake comes up. I go to push the cake out, and Will Smith turns around, and he goes, Anthony Mackey. And I go, oh, Will Smith knows my name. And I'm like, yo, what's up? And he goes, yo, man, what are you doing here? So I go to hug him. And he goes to like give me a like a pull me in close, like you my dude, like yeah. right here. So when I do that, he does that. And he catches me right like the in a in a sweet spot with a right hook. <laughs> and I was like, wow. And he grabbed me and he was like, you good? And I was like, yo, are we in a fight? <laughs> like, what, what are like, are we about to go right now? Let me go. Like, what are we doing? So he held me until I got my barons back. And I know somebody got video of this because he straight up punched me in the jaw. But I survived a right hook from Muhammad Ali. That's all I got to say. Yes. That's all you need. <laughs>